Welcome to this presentation about Marin's work on hydrofoils. My name is uh, Luigi Francesco Minerva. And my name is uh, Francesco Miguel Montero. And we are uh, talking about what we did uh, in the past few years on hydrofoils and the future. I will start with a small presentation on what's the background for this research. Luigi will talk a bit about what we did on 2018. I will then take back the stage to talk about what we did on 2019. And finally, Luigi will close talking about the future, this uh, joint industry project that uh, we are preparing. So hydrofoils, the future of high-speed craft. Everyone knows that. Except it was also the case in the 70s, in the 60s, in the 50s, and even earlier. So why do we as marine decide that apart from the fact that it has become fashionable, it is worth to do research on hydrofoil again? Well, there are two main reasons that uh, were not there in the 60s and 70s that makes us think that this is uh, feasible and it's uh, worth to keep pushing on this. And it is first materials. Uh, this shows, for instance, the usage of composite materials on the aerospace industry. And what we can see is that in time, the use has been more and more widespread and it is uh, safe. They are using it for passenger aircraft that have uh, to go through a lot of uh, safety checks. And it is lighter, it is better. And it is the same for the hydrofoils. It means, for instance, if we see this plot that shows the proportion of the different items, um, if this part of the hull structure and the foil system, we can make them lighter because we are using uh, composite materials, then we are gaining a lot of room for payload and fuel. And we can even make feasible heavier crafts. The second point is the computing power. Uh, this plot represents the Moore's law that gives the amount of transistors and integrated circuits chips. And you see that uh, it is increasing massively. And what does this mean to us as uh, designers? Well, it's two things. One, we can come up with more optimized designs of hydrofoils. And the second is that the control systems can be way more advanced and way faster than they were back in the day. Still, there are some challenges and limitations of foiling craft, uh, mainly it's takeoff, uh, heavier payloads, and stability, uh, maneuverability, cavitation and ventilation. Uh, what we see in the video is an example of this. It is, of course, uh, quite a radical uh, sport boat, so it's not something you would see on a passenger craft, but it illustrates uh, very nicely what happens when you are sailing in waves and your foil comes out of the water and it is when it gets back in the water because it is fully ventilated at that point it is not generating lift back immediately and it results on the uh, boat uh, crashing so when we decide uh, what are we going to do for our research on hydrofoils we need to start off what do you want of your hydrofoil craft, so the operational objectives, and these are safety, performance, comfort, and efficiency. Of course, the balance between these four depends a lot on the uh, application. For instance, for a high competition craft like the one uh, we see we saw in the previous video, performance is the most important thing. If you are carrying passengers, then probably safety and comfort are way more important. So to get to these four objectives, what do we need to really understand? So we came up with uh, this list of uh, physical things you need to understand to be able to provide those four objectives for your design. And we related each of them to which objective it has to significant impact and we came up with this which is really a mess and it tells us that you really need to look at all of this as a whole 
the steady state, most of this is well known. The dynamics, in some cases, it's also well known. Uh, there are the combination of all these phenomena in dynamic conditions. It is where we think that uh, we need the most research. So where do we go from here now that we have determined that we do want to make research, what we know, what we don't know, and why we want to know it, then we can define the final objective that it's, well, we would think it would be very good to have this design methodology for the foils and together with the dynamic control system that considers the hydrodynamic control and also the hydrostructural aspects that will become important with composite materials. To do so, this is our uh, roadmap in a way. Uh, first, we did uh, two pilot projects in 2018 and 2019 to get us in a position where we can really do research and where we know how to do this research. And then we are uh, trying to get together a joint industry project for 2021 and 2022 that uh, we will talk about later in this presentation. So now I hand the stage to Luigi and he will talk about the 2018 test campaign. For the 2018 campaign, if we go back to the list of operational objectives and uh, physical aspects interrelated to these objectives, the 2018 campaign was focused on the first two elements, stability and dynamic control. The objectives in particular were, first of all, understanding the, uh, the requirements to perform such tests in our facility. Secondly, the uh, investigate the feasibility of foiling solutions for heavy crafts in particular, which last but not least, understanding the implications of the control system choices. To reach these objectives, we came up with a, a, a special test setup, aimed uh, mostly to investigate the transit, of, uh, the, full, uh, the transit mode in full foiling. As a matter of fact, we have a box, not hydrodynamically shaped, because takeoff and landing are not, were not part of this campaign for the simple reason that the basing length has to be used either to investigate the takeoff and the landing or either investigate the, the transit unless we have thousands of uh, kilometers of a basing length available. So we have this full foiling uh, cradle uh, self-propelled and, uh, self and equipped with the three commercial foils uh, equipped with the flaps which were dynamically uh, contro uh, controlled to uh, deal with the pitch, uh, heave and roll. The yaw uh, was controlled by these rudders. The test matrix uh, was made of in, uh, just sailing at one forward speed, uh, speed uh, fast enough to have uh, uh, the wall uh, uh, um, craft uh, lift, and uh, bow and bow quartering seas with regular and regular waves were uh, used to uh, then check different dynamic different controls in the in the dynamic control systems with the PD uh, controller. This last part was also the, uh, co uh, consisted of the largest part of the test matrix because it took some trial and error to identify which were the right uh, settings for the dynamic controller. So we went through some, uh, many of these situations of uh, instability before we could finally arrive to uh, a full stable flying uh, vessel in in this case as you can see uh, bow quartering waves and at the end of the model test campaign we decided to challenge ourselves and saying do we really need the rudders to control the yo can we use the flaps of the uh, hydrofoils as the arc plane do with the roll and, ba and banking it was possible and uh, we uh, we uh, we did it as you can see in this uh, video, where uh, head waves, uh, not bow, bow quartering for the simple reason of time issues, and also not to uh, push forward the, the challenge in, in order to avoid to lose the uh, equipment. But as you can see, it worked. We, uh, we managed to uh, also have a full flying more, uh, vessel 
only by controlling in a more complex way the flaps of the, uh, of the hydrofoils. So conclusions for this model test campaign were it is possible to have uh, the equipment to test a self-propelled vessel dynamically controlled in transit port in our CKB maneuvering basin. Takeoff and landing should be separate, separately investigated. The response and the, uh, is very sensitive to the control system uh, settings. And in that respect, uh, one lesson learned and recommendation is that it's necessary to investigate the foil characteristics in unsteady conditions if we want to really find a, 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 the right tuning of the control settings. So cavitation, ventilation must be taken into account, but at the same time, dealing with a very complex system where we have a, a moving vessel with more than one hydrofoil self-propelled, with the cavitation ventilation, all of these effects together don't allow to have a real grasp on the physics behind and what is required to know as knowledge, uh, research, uh, knowledge base and design phase. And as a matter of fact, we, uh, we defined and on, based on these uh, lesson learned, we defined the model test campaign of 2019, which will be now described by Francisco. Yep, thank you, Luigi. 2019, we love that year, certainly more than uh, 2020. Um, anyway, so we looked already at the general behavior of the craft. The next step is to really zoom in in the hydrofoil, what happens in the hydrofoil is the special point that we are also going to be looking at the cavitation effects. Before we even go into the tank, uh, it was a good idea to do some uh, CFD to understand what to expect from these foils. Uh, remember, we are using the same foils that were used on the 2018 campaign, and these were commercial foils. They were not designed by us. So we needed to have this estimate of the forces so that we could design the right model test setup and we could also take the opportunity to learn a little bit more about the foils in this case we can see the difference of the pressure distribution with and without the strut and here also with the presence of the free surface so once we did that and we had an idea of what kind of loads uh, we could expect we went to the next step that's to design a test setup uh, this test setup was uh, built in our depressurized wave basin where we can really take uh, atmospheric pressure out and test in real cavitating conditions and when we look at this uh, image there is one thing that comes up even before than the foil that is uh, this it's the exapod the exapod is a piece of equipment that allows us to perform oscillations and any movement in six degrees of freedom in a predefined way so we can actually move the model in this case the hydrofoil in any way we want for uh, the model test then below the exapod we have the hydrofoil where we can measure the forces and we have an underwater camera that it's also fixed to the exapod so the hydrofoil always stays on the same position in the plane the videos and the forces are synchronized and this allows us to uh, really correlate the visual things so for instance the size of the cavity with the force that we are measuring and we can do these kind of things here and we can look at why for instance uh, the shape of the force there that's the blue line is not perfectly sinusoidal and we would see that it's because of the cavity that uh, you can see on the image on the upper left corner so what why we are doing this maybe it's good to take a breather and say okay where do we want to go well in the same way as uh, 2018 we want to know for ourselves uh, what are the requirements to perform such tests identify pitfalls and try to get a testing protocol in place for future projects understand what happens in unsteady conditions when there are the presence of cavitation and possibly ventilation and a bit to try to mimic what would be a commercial project to develop a numerical model for a that you can use later for your dynamic control strategy, even in the simulators, 
So with this uh, last uh, objective is what drives the definition of the test matrix. So what do we want to get? Ideally, these are the equation of motions of any ship or anything in a linear way. Uh, we are going to focus on the foil. So effectively for the full craft, you would have to couple this with the mass matrix of the craft and the other foils. But basically, this is it. And you have the mass plus the added mass, that it's the coefficient that uh, affects the forces related to the accelerations. The damping term, that is the coefficient that determines the forces uh, that are related to the velocities. And the restoring term, that's the spring term, this is related to the position of the foil. And then you have the excitation forces, that is any external effect, in this case, waves. So if we want to build this simple model, of course, it's a linearized model. We are aware there are a lot of nonlinear effects, but we are just on a simplified way. And around one point, we can always linearize. We need to fill in those A, B, C matrices and the F vector. <clears throat> to do so, uh, we do first quasi steady runs or steady runs. Uh, in this case, because the accelerations and the velocities are very low and there are no waves, everything that we measure, we can relate to the um, restoring term. For the other two, we need to do several oscillations at different amplitudes. And based on the fact that there is a 90 degrees uh, phase shift between both of them, we can determine what is uh, each of them doing. And finally, the forces, that's very easy. We just fix the foiling position and in use the wave makers in the basin to generate some waves and measure the force. Mm, of course, and I will get uh, back later to the lessons learned, we did not manage to make a very complete model, but there are a couple of things that we can uh, talk about uh, regarding the results. Uh, so the first thing when you are doing these test campaigns that is uh, experimental and we are looking as much as the results as to the way we do the test is to compare the results with the theoretical reference. That's what I'm going to do here for these uh, two items. That's the influence of depth and the dynamic effects. Influence of depth, we could use this uh, 1955 formulation from Wadlin to compare the results. And what we see is that the uh, test data can correlate uh, very well to the theory. Uh, once uh, we adjust uh, the parameters, but there is a discrepancy between the test data and the CFD simulations that I will go back uh, later to it. But it looks promising. Of course, it's not a line on the test because uh, it, it was not static, but quasi static. But, uh, it looks uh, quite reasonable to me. Then one other interesting thing is that when you are in cavitating conditions, the influence of depth has a distinct different uh, shape. And this is because normally the influence of depth is dominated by the free surface boundary condition. But when you have a cavitating conditions, then it is dominated by the size of the cavity and it behaves substantially different. Dynamic effects, again, we need to find somewhere to correlate. And uh, what we used here was the Theodorsen and steady aerodynamics theory, which should be close to what we get without cavitation, so in uh, atmospheric conditions, and for the larger depths uh, that we tested. Um, just for reference, we have there two plots. In the left hand side, you have the magnitude of the forces, the lift in this case, as a function of the reduced frequency. And on the right hand side, uh, we have the phase lag yes, as a function of the frequency. So we are going to have tests more or less in this range. And what we expect is that as we increase the frequency, the magnitude of the lift uh, amplitude is reducing and that the phase lag is increasing. So this is what we get analyzing the test results. And there are uh, two things that you can immediately see. One is that the magnitude 
it is actually increasing and the phase lag is uh, following the right trend but there are a couple of points that uh, are a bit uh, funny there in cavitating conditions we have a similar behavior of the magnitude and basically the uh, phase is a bit of a mess which is not what we expected as i just uh, explained earlier and now when we get to the lessons learned we can explain why we think uh, this was so first um, to get better fits on the um, equations of motion uh, we should have done more oscillation amplitudes uh, because we didn't have a big uh, certainty of the results especially because a lot of those amplitudes were very small so it was very difficult to make a good fit the flap joint uh, although not used it was not rigid enough uh, remember this is the foil that we used in 2018 and it has a flap for control this flap was supposed to remain rigid but the joint of this flap to the foil was actually uh, some elasticity and we could even observe that on the video and that has uh, influence in the results especially at high frequencies because the flap can vibrate by itself and also that's why the leaf was less than we expected based on the cfd because we could even see on the video that accelerating the angle of the flap was decreasing the oscillations also were not around the center of hydrodynamic forces but around the geometrical center of the foil which means that on the measurements uh, of the forces in dynamic conditions we are going to get some added mass effects uh, not only lift and it is difficult to separate uh, these two effects uh, ideally we would like to oscillate around at least two points so that we can uh, back calculate what is depending on the added mass and what is depending on the hydrodynamic forces and that's also why we most likely had this kind of uh, behavior in the uh, magnitude that was increasing with frequency again the oscillations were a bit too small as i said earlier and we would really have liked to see more dynamic stall effects uh, but again that's something for next time and just to make sure that we didn't have uh, free surface effects we would have liked to have made this way deeper so basically with uh, the foil almost touching the water so the, the hexapod almost touching the water to make sure that there were no uh, funny effects there but anyway uh, in the same way as 2018 this campaign was meant to learn this kind of things and then leave us in a good position to offer this kind of tests in the GAP that Luigi is uh, going to talk about now and as a last remark about the lesson learned in 2019, observations and their correlation with uh, uh, the measurements are also a key aspect to understand a design. And another lesson learned was related to the um, triggering of the cavitation, the inception of the cavitation, which, uh, as we saw, uh, when we use, we need to seed the water on model scale with nuclei by ele an electrolysis grid, and you and this could became a problem because when uh, turned on, the whole system was uh, uh, cavitating in such a way that, uh, despite as you can see on the picture on the right, we were finally having uh, the right shape of cavitation as expected on the hydrofoil. The amount of bubbles generated by the cavitating seeding system was making it impossible to make any observation. With all of these lessons learned in mind, we move forward to the next, uh, what we think could be a next step. A joint industry project about foil design. First of all, why a joint industry project? That's for among the means different reasons. One of the most important is that for a, uh, it, it is a bridge between research and application. It links pure research with the needs of the industry and it does that providing results of research worthy of 200,000 euros even more with a very uh, low entry, uh, entry fee. 
at the same time involving so many uh, parties in the, in the industry means also that there are some challenges especially when we think about cooperation between competitors that's or uh, find managing to find a common denominator in the uh, definition of the uh, of the research uh, path finding concrete deliverables solving change in the scope with the budget and time participation modalities all challenges which anyway in our experience have been every time solved because uh, we at Marin have a very long uh, time history in uh, successful JAPs. Focusing now on the, uh, the JAP about foil design, I go back to uh, one of the initial slides where we were linking the operational objectives and the physical aspects. The foil design method must uh, have the uh, must Will be placed in these uh, in between these aspects may, must be able to link these aspects and our objective is to find uh, to develop an early design uh, tool method, uh, method, uh, methodology in particular for this JP we want to focus on these aspects dynamic control lift and drag ventilation and cavitation aspects in unsteady uh, conditions how to do that Theoretically and academically speaking, the, ideally, what we would, do, would like to have is generating as much, a data set for many types of hydrofoils geometries, building up a systematic series of hydrofoils, but not only flaps, struts, and combine all of this information to develop this design tool. As a more, uh, in, and what kind of information we need? Basically, uh, this tool has to uh, take a look at the same information that we have also seen in the 2019 campaign. So, the foil in dynamic conditions and the building up a mathematical model that can define its proper, uh, properties and at the same time connecting these, the motions of the foil in dynamic conditions with the unsteady physical uh, phenomena that are occurring, cavitation and ventilation, and the generation of lift and drag. This, tool, this uh, design method has to, be the cap has to have the capability to consider all of these aspects together. What kind of tool? Our idea is to develop a tool that, uh, it, whose backbone it relies on a sim simple potential flow tools as the low fidelity level, simple potential flow tools like lifting, uh, simple li uh, lifting line theory, vortex lat uh, method and panel method, but enhanced and supported by the knowledge of uh, high fidelity tools such as runs, CFD computations and model test uh, and the model test campaign. These high fidelity tools allow us to really identify the factors that result in non-linear behavior of all of these phenomena, which can't be predicted by simple tools, and at the same time come up as a, with some semi-empirical corrections and or applications envelopes, which help to define the boundaries of uh, the applicability also of an early design uh, tool. The JPs is proposed to be uh, made of basically three work packages. The first one is based on the identification of representative case. We are not going to investigate optimal uh, academical shapes, but uh, real uh, feasible uh, practical shapes suggested by the industry uh, itself. And not only the shape of the hydrofoils, but also struts and flat shapes. And identify what are the design, the, uh, the most important design objectives for these hydrofoils. Maximum lift at takeoff, uh, safety uh, and, and so and, and, and etc. What pack two is based on the high fidelity investigations, runs investigations and model test campaign uh, considered in the same fashion as we in terms of test metrics as we did at, uh, in the 2019 campaign. Last work package is the real development of the prediction de uh, design uh, tool, which for example can, uh, based on inputs such as given foil max dimensions and required lift, can give as an output a basic initial geometry, 3D geometry of the hydrofoils, all the characteristics of the hydrofoil in steady conditions, lift, drag, but also 
all the coefficients and the knowledge that we require to set in preliminary a dynamic control systems, added mass, damping coefficients, excitation forces, and on top of that, also provide for the, uh, for the given objectives what are the estimated operational limits, up to which uh, level is possible to operate before cavitation or ventilation occurs. Such a tool can be even thought as the, uh, the, uh, to be used in, co in combination with uh, an optimizer to even further refine the, uh, the foil design itself. As additional remarks, uh, as I said, the scope of work and the work packages are preliminary because the final scope of work depends on the partner inputs and the number of participants. I want to stress again how this JAP is meant to not provide pure academic research but answers the needs of the designer and the industry. The expected time frame is uh, uh, now in the 2021-2022 and for any other uh, information, uh, we will be more than happy to discuss them together with your questions for uh, the, pre uh, the rest of the presentation in the next uh, uh, meeting uh, with the question and answers. With this, uh, we would like to thank you uh, for, the, for the attention and we look forward for the next uh, meeting. Thank you very much.